So Patrick Allen, your three seed, has moved on by three pins to take on your two seed, Pete Weber, our semifinal match on deck right now at the one-a-day Earl Anthony Memorial Classic. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, glad you're with us this Sunday afternoon here on ESPN2. PA, the Hoss, making his first televised appearance of the season. Had a strong start. Well, lost it. What? And gained it back in the nick of time to win by three pins over Tommy Jones. And a strike on that left lane. Majors, good for third and second on the all-time list from St. Anne, Missouri, PBA Hall of Famer, Pete Weber. PD Dub does not look like he's 48. He does not act it either. He is pure theater. Pretty stuff. I'll tell you where you really feel it though when you're 48 is the nerves. And Pete's body's still in pretty good shape, but I'll tell you what, it's the nerves is where it hits you. Here are some of the guys who have had over a hundred career televised appearances. Parker Bone the third, 107, Earl Anthony, 114. There's Pete Weber. Today, 124, and your all-time leader, Walter Ray Williams Jr., 172. Only six have made a century's worth of appearances. Walter Ray, almost 50 more appearances than Pete Weber. Back to back, the opening jacks for PD Dub. And nobody on this tour more fun to watch when they get it going than this man right here. And I want you to watch this little love tap right here on the 10. All right, get out of there. He gets a little, uh, gives a little, yeah. All right, but that's nothing. Wait till, you, wait till you see Pete throw four in a row. I think he's got a little message for you, Rob. It's one of the reasons I showed up with a smile on my face today. Here is P.A. in the second trying to match Weber. Come on, high road. Allen voted the 44th greatest player in PBA history couple seasons ago. We're going to scroll underneath right now the list of the other finishers and Mika well, Koivu Nuyemi, who won quarter of a million dollars last Saturday, missed the show by Gotta do it. one pin this Got week. Shot. Jason Couch, the lefty from Claremont, Florida, had a great run as well. There's Parker Bone III, still haven't so seen him you know or Ronnie Russell this it. season. Ditto for Let's your 10th finisher, Ryan He's Schaefer. Afraid. It's our first tournament this season where we had multiple left-handers on the telecast and really the first tournament that stands out to me to where the lefties actually had a breakout week. All right move, it is baby, yeah. Patrick Allen using the same ball on both lanes now. Right move baby, you betcha. And I'll, I'll tell you Rob, anytime you have a show with Pete Weber, yeah, it's great, but you know what? You sprinkle in a little Patrick Allen and some Tommy Jones, it's a nice mix. Nothing but strikes thus far in our semifinal match. PA has fascinating inner dialogues that he shares with us. Here is Weber stepping up in the third, down 10. Come on! Lead off triple for the St. Louis Cardinal fan. Take a look at what PD Dub is throwing at the pins today. P. Weber going with the Marvel, the hooking his bowling ball for him in the locker room. And he told us, well, you know, I've been working real hard with Brother Rich back home, working on my posture, trying to stand tall and get rid of that early tilt. See, Pete Weber's worn a golf glove on that right hand forever. Protect those fingers. 
the full stretched fingertip grip of Pete Weber. Weber, the 10 pin shy of a ham bone. He wanted it. He's not the only one in this house who wanted it. I want you to take a look at the finish of Pete Weber right here. Very uncharacteristic of Pete to come up and out of it. Looks like he slipped a little bit there on that shot. He really liked it though off his hand. And only to look at it. Ringing 10 pin staring him in the face. First non strike of the semifinal match. Yeah, I know you wanted that, uh, that four bagger really bad, Rob. But a what? The four bagger, the four in a row, the quad. I know you wanted that really bad, but you're, you're going to have to wait, sir. Well, he said he had some struggles this week with with spares, and it was uh, because he drilled a new spare ball this week. I was week, worried about that one. <laughs> so the three six ten was the spare problem that he really had and has always had. Now here's. PA sitting on a triple, ready to drop a four bagger here in the semifinals. Waiting in the wings, your one seed, Ryan Simonelli. Hambone! Second Hambone of the afternoon for the Hoss, Patrick Allen, ESPN is your. Home court of college hoops. Big Monday doubleheader on ESPN at 7. It's Biggie Showdown. Louisville almost pulled an upset at UConn yesterday. They take out Georgetown, who had a big win. And then at 9 Eastern, Jordan Hamilton and the Longhorns taking on Texas A&M. Big Monday presented by Bud Light on ESPN. And both those games also available online at ESPN3.com and on your phone. Allen to begin the fifth. He has been perfect thus far. Mm. Mm. Solid eight pin for Patrick Allen. The bowling ball goes right past that. It's known as a stone eight. As in, he got robbed by the stone eight. Now somebody gave me a sign today here that said, can you please start saying stone eight? I don't get many opportunities. So there well, it is. that certainly was one of yeah. them. And, and I was going to say, Patrick Allen's been navigating his way through this oil pattern very nicely mm -hmm. today, changing bowling balls, but not only that, just making quality shots. Pocket has been his friend today. Yeah. And, and Rob, you just don't see him throwing it all over the building. I mean, he's making great quality shots. Had a 226, dropping six strikes, including four in a row in his match one victory over Tommy Jones. Now he's taking on Pete Weber, who he's defeated twice in the previous TV encounters. Here's how PD Dub got here. This is his fourth top 20 finish of the season, and this is best result of this campaign. He's been 17th twice up until now. Did not like it at all. Let it go. Well, and you, you, you talked about Pete not wanting to shoot the 3 6 10. Well, you got to add the 9 well, pin now, and it makes it even that much tougher because of the back pin. If Pete just looked hesitant That's on this shot, really. he grabbed it and never gave it room to the right. And right now in trouble. Trying to avoid the open frame. Oof. God. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, it, especially when his opponent started with, with the front four. Weber behind the eight ball now. And that deficit just went. Was 26 before the open frame. Excuse Weber me. Needs a strike here in the sixth. And he'll get it! That close to a 7 10. He'll take the scrappy drop. And he gets a little momentum back on his side. And the crowd to boot. Ah, 
flexing the guns as PD Dub. Down goes the seven, down goes the 10. How much longer will the 48 year old be out on the tour? We'll tell you when we return for the conclusion of a semifinal match with PA. Welcome back, everyone, to Dublin, California. Randy Peterson, Rob Stone, the Earl Anthony Memorial Classic. Hey, you know what? Let's take a look at the Bear Trusted Pain Relief Replay brought to you by the makers of Bear Aspirin. Pete Weber coming off an open frame just when it looked like a possible 7-10 split. Pete says no. Let me give you this little chop, and I'll take that strike in the sixth. A huge moment in this match as things were starting to slip away from Weber. He went spare open frame in the fourth oh, and the man. fifth. This was coming after Allen opened up with a four-bagger. Now here is P.A. trying to get back on the strike train to close out the sixth. Still comfortably in control, but let's keep an eye on how he reacts. You said four-bagger. Every once in a while, I let that slip out for the old-timers. Mm. No messenger to take care of the seven. A little late pop on the back part of the lane on that shot there. That caused the ball to come in a little bit late, a little bit behind the head pin. And Patrick Allen leaves the corner. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, Slick. Back nine spares for PA. Next Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday on ESPN 4 Eastern. Yes, Lil Wayne. Yes, is going to be with us. Nelly, Reggie Bush, and Chris Paul. The Chris Paul PBA Celebrity Invitational. It was taped a couple weeks ago in New Orleans and. Uh, we had fun. Yes, we did. It's going to be a very enjoyable telecast. You are going to enjoy it as well. Live on ESPN at 4 o'clock. PD Dub was there. PA is here as we begin the seventh. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. One of my favorite lines in all of bowling. PA's. Maybe. It's just great television. It's great to watch. Not only. Pete Weber, but that man right there. Let's see if Pete Weber can get one off his hand on this right lane and double up to cut the deficit to 15. A strike in the seventh and eighth. He'll only trail by five. Back to back jacks. Well, he For that the native of St. Anne, Missouri. He sure did. Now, Pete Weber, third all-time with 35 career Lumber Liquidator PBA Tour titles. And, Randy, they have been spread out. The 80s, he took home 13. 11 in the 90s. 10 in the 2000s. Just one. We're early. It's early. We're early in this decade. And we asked Pete yesterday, now, how much longer are you going to bowl? He's going to be 49 in August. And he said, as long as there's an exempt tour, and as long as I'm exempt, I'll be here. Which is good news for a lot of people. Hard to imagine this tour without Pete Weber. Hallelujah. Oh, got a hook. Got a hook. Hook! Oh. Dang it. I think I threw it that bad. Well, he puts a great touch on this just to get it back to the pocket, but because it drifts so far past that head pin, see how it comes in late behind it. He's going to leave a corner pin every time doing that, but got no love, no kick off the sidewall. Pete Weber now. Trailing by 16 with a spare here in the eighth frame. Patrick Allen in the driver's seat. And again, PA has not missed the pocket all afternoon. Uh, that was a little better than that. So Allen steps up. He took care of Tommy Jones in match number one, 226 to 223. Stay steady, Just like Tuesday. Just like Tuesday, man. Come on. Just like Tuesday. Ah! 
Well, it's the first time we've seen that from him today, Rob, where he throws a shot, doesn't like it as soon as it leaves his hand, goes through the nose. He's a 2-4-7. Little grab left of target, excuse me, right of target. He's got no chance of holding line. But again, working on a strike, it's very important. If he covers a spare here, he doesn't lose pin count. If he was on a spare, obviously, he would have lost three. Big pickup by PA. Head on over to PBA.com right now. Check out all the great merchandise and apparel that's Welcome, Tommy. apparel that is available in their online store. T-shirts, polos, hats, hoodies, retro shirts, bowling towels, and more. Simply click on the shop tab at PBA.com. I made a big purchase earlier today over at the uh, merchandise Good. table over there. I'm still waiting for my Good discount, time, Come on. which I don't think I got. Hope you get your credit card back. If <laughs> not, I'm going to use it. <laughs> uh, people are feasting on my Amex already, huh? We begin the foundation frame ninth with Allen off a spare. Wow. Drow is right. What has happened to Hoss? 2 6 10. And it couldn't have happened at a worse time for Patrick Allen. Cuts right through the nose. Nice break would have been to trip that two pin out instead. He's faced himself with a dilemma. Does he try to convert or does he try and just take out the six and the ten and stay ahead in the count game? What would you do? Well, that would put him at 193. You sure. He could strike out for 223. The sure? best Weber can shoot, however, though, sure? 232. I think at this point, he's got to try to convert it. They're tied. Excuse me. Patrick Allen still leading by one in the count department. However, now it's a 223. Pete Weber, and he's in control of his own destiny. Now he can strike out 232. But it starts right here with the first strike in the ninth frame. Boy, that, that just wasn't a good shot. I think it was probably because of the shot he threw on the left lane where he got it wide. He tried to go a little straighter and tighter with that. Went through with, with a little loft, and it was just too straight up the front part of the lane. So Weber leaves the four pin on this shot, and this is becoming a case, Randy, here from the eighth frame on where neither guy really wants to seize this one. Now the best Weber could shoot 221. Remember, right. Patrick Allen can um, still shoot. A little bit better than that, Pete. He can still shoot 223. The last two shots now. that Patrick Allen has thrown have both gone through the nose. Pete Weber's last two shots, 10 pin, 4 pin. A pressure-filled 10th frame on deck right now. Weber down two, working a spare. Right of target. Not the time for That's that. That's kind of close. Well, just a bad shot, and Pete will be the first one to tell you now. I knew I wanted to throw it right, but not quite that far. Yeah, exactly. Now he leaves himself the rail, the one, two, four, seven. And with a spare and a strike, he's only going to be able to shoot 207. That means that Patrick Allen, with any kind of mark and good count in the 10th frame, will bolt for the title. So Weber able to cover that one. <laughs> The rail? I knew there was the rail. I like that. I didn't want to hit it, though. You know, we talked about this when we when we saw the Know the Woods segment and how the players nice try to manipulate try. the end of the pattern. And for Weber, nice it's try. it was that axis rotation, that axis tilt that would get his ball to read when he missed a little bit to the right. That shot just way too far right. There's a good one. Don't throw it like that. And 
leaves the seven. Will that be it for Pete Weber today? He will sit down with a 206 and see what Patrick Allen can do. <laughs> Patrick needs a mark and four. And he's going to bowl for the title. Patrick on, Allen man. looking Come on. to become a 14 time winner. Still loose. Still loose. Still loose. Still loose. Still loose. Needs to pick this one up and then get four pins. And real easy to chop this spare, chop the two off the four. Patrick Allen's a great spare shooter. Right now, again, he needs to make this and then four on the on the, the shot afterward. You gotta stay behind it, man. Last three shots went through the you nose. Stay behind it. And that's what happens when he gets around it. You gotta stay behind it. Come on. Stay behind it. Come on, stay behind it. Ooh. No chop, Man. but awfully close. Y you have no idea how close that was. I mean, he could have chopped the two straight back off the four there. Very, very fortunate. Now needs just four pins Gotta to move on, on the front, right? to the title match. I mean, if you want a diagram of how to chop the two off the four, that was it. Oh, it's Jesus. And the Hoss moves on. An all lefty final on deck. But before we hit our title match, we'll reflect back on last Saturday's wild day in Las Vegas a Hall of Fame ceremony, a 100 game, a 299 from that man, plus a quarter of a million dollars put in Mika Koivu Niemi's bank account. All that when we return to the PBA on ESPN. I'd like to give our thanks to that gentleman, Ted Hoffman, the proprietor here at Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl, also a PBA Hall of Famer and just one of the great guys in the bowling community. NBA action coming your way tonight. Aaron Williams and the Utah Jazz taking on the Golden State Warriors. NBA Sunday on ESPN, 10 Eastern. This game also available online over at ESPN3.com and on your telephone. Rob Stone joined by newly inducted PBA Hall of Fame member Randy Peterson. Show him the ring. It looks good. He makes me kiss it now every time I see him. It's, it sets up for some awkward moments. Nothing awkward, though, about last Saturday in Las Vegas. The Tournament of Champions, the Hall of Fame induction. What a, a crazy TV show, and one that's certainly going to go down in history for for multitude of reasons. Yeah, it, it was... Uh, I'm still having my TFC withdrawals, but um, what a tournament. What a week. Uh, but any time you see players bowling for life-changing money, you just never really know how they're going to handle the nerves. And, and I thought, honestly, I thought all the players performed brilliantly. Well, Mika Koivu Niemi came in with some great momentum. He had a feeling the week before the PBA World Championship that he was on to something. And he won his first match, taking down Andre Gomez by four pins. So he moves on to take on Tom Doherty, the number two seed. And two. Doherty struggled. And here he is in the 10th, needing two pins for 100. And let's celebrate. And, and when I said brilliantly, all players perform brilliantly. He was great. He was very gracious in defeat, only bowling 100. Handled it well. Here's Koi Niemi. Perfect game in the 10th. Needing one more for a 300 game on television. Messenger nestles, but not enough juice to drop it. So Mika with the 299. But the good news, he was able to move on to the title match to take on Tom Smallwood. And he was just flawless in the title match. Tom Smallwood. Had to go with weaker equipment. Didn't really like his ball reaction or look very well. You see how that ball just labored down the lane. And boy, you could see the writing on the wall for Mika Koivuniemi. Just gift wrapped for him a quarter of a million dollars in his third major. A 269 wins it. And here's Mika on the week that was in Vegas. 
Well, it was it was great, great week. Uh, it's the biggest tournament in my life, and I end up be winning it. So, I think really sucking a couple of days later, and a lot of people calling and asking how you feel, and I start to feel really good. And again, Mika carrying that over by missing this week's show by one pin. Maybe that same pin that he missed to get a 300 game. After that, as if that wasn't enough, was the PBA Hall of Fame induction where this guy was inducted. But first, Len Nicholson brought up Dale Eagle. Memorable speeches across the board. And there is Randy Peterson being inducted on Sunday and uh, a moment that still really hasn't left you. It, it has and it won't for, forever. Just a tremendous honor. Um, still, I still get choked up, you know, just thinking about what a wonderful night that was for not only for myself, but my family, my TV family, my PBA family. It was, uh, it was wonderful to be able to share that with everyone. And, and the beauty is we have the pictures to prove. Yes, to we do. That was a great assortment of pictures that your lovely wife Becky handed on <laughs> over to me. I appreciate it. Well, while we're on the theme of the Hall of Fame, that's where our more of what matters to you fan question brought to you by the makers of One A Day goes. And it goes to you from Anthony in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. At what point in your career, Randy, did you realize becoming a Hall of Famer was a possibility? Well, I think certainly after I won my last title in 2002, the Pepsi Open, uh, they gave me 13 and one major. I, I pretty much felt like I was locked. But I think the, the number that kind of gives you the idea that you have the golden ticket is 10 titles. Um, and it was a couple years back when I'd won 10 titles, and once I got to that plateau, I, I kind of figured I had, you know, I had uh, a good chance of getting in. But, you know, when you get to 13 in one major, it's pretty much just a matter of time or how long you're going to have to wait to get in. But quite honestly, for me, it didn't matter how long I'm in. I'm in the history books forever. And, uh, again, it's just something that will always stay with me and my family and my friends and just a tremendous honor. Congratulations, Thank my you. friend. I, I love saying Hall of Famer. It's fun. It's fun. Well, one Hall of Famer to be is up next, and another one maybe down the road. 24-year-old Ryan Simonelli has been a runner-up on the tour twice. Next up for the Buffalo native, a shot at his first tour title.